Hi, I am Giovanni Bonaschi, and I'm here to tell you about a paper that resulted from a PhD research with Marc Pelletier. In this paper, we clarify the mysterious connection between rate-independent systems, gradient flows, and noise. Rate-independent and gradient flow systems are both driven by a force that derives from an energy, but in a very different way. In a rate-independent system, the force remains the same, whatever the velocity is, while in a gradient flow system, the velocity is proportional to the force. Let's now do a little experiment to show this by pulling a wooden block sitting on a surface using a spring. When we pull, dry friction with the table prevents movement until the force passes a threshold. Then the block starts moving and the force remains the same, even if the speed increases. If I do the same with a layer of syrup, then the force is proportional with the speed. In the field of variational evolution, the first one is called rate independent and the second one, gradient flow. They are both variational evolutions in the sense that they are driven by a force that is the gradient of an energy, but in a very different way, as we can see from the graphs. Because these two types of evolution are so different, they seem to be completely unrelated. And for a long time, I also thought that this was the case. Even though my supervisor convinced me early on, mathematically, that they might be related. But it took for me a long time to see the big picture. And now I do. And I want to convince you too of this correspondence. Let me now explain how. If you look at the underside of a block, it is rough at a microscopic scale. And to understand the effect of this roughness, let's look at a toy model. It is a system driven by a large-scale energy, with a microscopic roughness creating energy barriers that it can overcome due to thermal noise. This is like looking at a particle jumping between lattice sites. The jump rates depend on the global slope and on the parameter beta, which is the ratio of the roughness to the noise. And this is our micromodel. Now, let's zoom out again. The behavior of this system can be captured by a large deviations rate functional. Such a functional, let's call it j, and it depends on beta, tells us how probable some behavior is. j is equal to zero is the typical behavior. While a small value of j represents a slightly untypical behavior. And for very improbable behavior, the value of j is much higher. Now we are going to play with this beta. When beta goes to zero, it turns out that the limit j0 exactly characterizes a gradient flow behavior. While when beta goes to infinity, the limit j infinity exactly characterizes a rate independent behavior. We can see the convergence also in the graphs. Also, j beta has a force velocity dependence. And we see in the two different scaling regimes, it converges to the gradient flow or to the rate independent. And this means that one stochastic microscopic system describes gradient flow and rate independent in a different parameter regimes. So rate independent and gradient flows are two ends of the same spectrum. Providing a rigorous proof of this correspondence, as well as a general scheme that can be applied to a wide class of system, has been a main ingredient in my PhD thesis with Marc Pelletier. Initially, I certainly believed that the combination of stochastics and dynamical systems could work, but I couldn't see why it had to. But having mastered the proofs and built upon them made me much more confident. I'm not so worried of critical questions anymore. However, I will welcome any question, critical or otherwise, and I invite you to take a look at my paper at this website.